Good. All righty. Call the order at 7.03. We can get a quick roll call and get ourselves going for today's. Okay. Mayor Gamrat, I can hear you. I can say Here. so. Here. Here. Deb, you want to say hello? She can't. You're She's muted. muted. You're muted, Deb. Here, I'm sorry. Here. We we know you're here. <laughs> Shut rooms. I'm here. Hello. Okay. I can see you. Here. Madam McDowell. Here. Diane Law. Here. And President Jay Bourne. Still here. Still here. Yay. Right, let's get let's get into it. Let's get into it. Um, what we got on on the order. First off, as always, kind of public comments. Uh, but before we begin, I just say if you would like to comment, if you are online, so don't uh, see anybody here. Uh, if you want to click on the raise your hand, uh, we'll be able to promote you, and then you're able to speak for three minutes. You can state your name and address as a Churchill taxpayer. That having been said, I'll give it a couple seconds, see if anybody wants to raise their hand. Some light crowd today. Mm -hmm. Five, five people on right now. Back to the old times. <laughs> I, I'm not seeing any hands. Are you seeing any hands? Any phones? All right. Then I'm going to close public comment at this time, and we're going to move forward. We have a few uh, matters, discussion items that, that we can work through. Um, First of all, in terms of any questions on, on drafts on minutes or any other information from there, anyone? So we're good there. Um, any questions on any received reports? Anything that you've looked at uh, within the binder that falls within the kind of uh, staff recording space? I do have a question. Um, in terms of the waste management bid that we put out have we received a good response? We expect three bidders. The bids are due on Friday at 10. And it's likely, I think Waste Management was trying to get theirs to us on Friday or today, uh, but we won't open them until they'll all be publicly opened at the same time. We'll read the appropriate things we can quickly and then just basically do a quick bid tag. And I think your committee is gonna try to look yeah. at them. And then possibly, if we're comfortable, we may vote on Monday the, the qualified one better, or we may wait till October. We have too many questions we just can't figure out by Monday and then do it in the first meeting of October. And, and the bidders assure me that that will be enough time if we have to change contracts for the January one start. Um, but for them, this is um, like rainy season. It's monsoon season for the bidders because they're all of the municipalities who are up for contracts sort of all go at the same time start on the calendar here. So yeah. I sense um, anxiety on their end, but I'm, I'm looking possibly at three that will actually submit, but it could be four, probably not more. I mean, I don't think there's many players out there. Yeah, we'll find and we'll, we can discuss that actually even more when we get to it on, on the climate action. So I think it is under part of Adam's conversation mm -hmm. if you have questions mm -hmm. on, on that committee. Um, anything else just in terms of just general staff reports? information is what it is there. I'm going to turn to you, Alex, on, uh, on uh, the space on, and I suppose, uh, Adam, on the space on finance, uh, where we are on the, on the budget. If you guys want to kind of give a quick conversation on that, then we can talk about the rest of it. I can give the big picture and go into any details. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we are working on the draft budget. We've uh, let me just take a quick look at my notes here we met, uh, what was it, uh, two weeks ago almost now. Um, the one thing that we were reviewing that's mentioned here is the purchase of a new public works truck. And we had some discussion about whether to buy or lease that truck. And I hope you had some questions. Do all your questions get answered from Michelle's email? Yes. So, okay. Yes. Uh, and I believe, and Michelle can jump in as well, um, that this was already budgeted for, so it's not actually going to be a against the current budget. So we should be good to go with the purchase of this vehicle. As you can see in here, the, the purchase price is almost 72,000. So, um, Alex or Michelle, was there anything to add to the 
public works truck. Yeah, you just see we have a little bit of information here about the truck. I mean, the vehicle we have currently is a 2011 Ford 250. Uh, we're not going with an F-250 because they're just really not available. And even though we're going to place an order for this, there's a possibility we may not get delivery till after the, the next fiscal year. Uh, we're hoping to hold on to it for 10 years. Uh, as you can see, we're not going to put a ton of miles on it, but they take a beating. And that, that is one of the reasons we are factoring in a number of, if we look at resale and we look at warranties, that the kind of beatings they take, uh, and making a lot of money back on these, all that front end with plowing that they take. Um, when we looked at leasing, we looked at what was it, 6,500, 8,500 was the extra cost if we went to leasing. And it just really for us, it was more of a rental because for them, back to the abuse, they really don't like to lease these kinds of things. You think of your own personal lease, you can keep your mileage down low. They 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 can resell that when you're done with your lease and you go into another lease. But these take such a beating, it's really not the way it works for them. So that's why it really ended up being more like a loan to us interest payments. So that was kind of in a nutshell. What we'd like to do is next we get authority to order and if we can take delivery before the end of this year, we'll pay for it. And for this fiscal we'll pay for it in the next year and then we will sell the current truck that all jobs. The current vehicle, though it does have a lot of miles, does have rusting and has become the point where, you know, it could be next year it doesn't pass inspection because the frame is cracked or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, that brings a question to mind. As far as uh, what is the lifespan of the accessories? Like the purchase of strobe lights, the salt spreader, the plow, what typically is the lifespan? Ralph is very meticulous about maintaining those, and we do not have to replace those this time around. Okay. The light bar is the easiest, but the ease when we when we put it away, we we'll make sure you know salt is your enemy, and salt is tremendously corrosive. <laughs> so he's constantly, if you see his vehicle, you can really get it. It's constantly throughout the year keeping it clean. That's really important and at the end of the season, and even when you start the season, to give it a good um, lubrication and make sure everything is, is covered and coated. So we, we, we didn't have to replace it all. But the, what ends up happening though is the, the blade is quite dull and that might calm down because I'm going to do a little plowing. And, and everything is just really worn out in the this time. We didn't have to replace, for example, the salt spreader or the plow. But I'm not saying, or am I guaranteeing that in 10 years, that won't be the case. Just you know, something like that would have That's a great question. I just was asking that because I saw in the estimate they provided like the purchase of the strobe lights, the correct of uh, uh -huh. center call center console. And right. so I just wanted to know if those would be things that we could take from the old vehicle and retrofit to we'll sell those. I mean this is it. Okay. Yeah. All right. And and we may get some money out of those, but yeah, they're at the end of their lifespan. Okay. They lasted 10 years and hopefully until you get this vehicle, they'll last a little longer. Two other two other thoughts on that one. One would be probably since it's a different model truck, pro probably wouldn't you know be an easy fit up, you know, because it's different for the frames and everything else. And then uh like Alex said, you know, we'll sell it as a whole package that way. We're not spending a lot of man hours taking stuff apart and trying to fit it to a newer vehicle with older stuff. Just just I think typically how it's handled once it's passed a couple of years. I'm just trying to figure out. No, great question. I was just, just adding comment. So, good stuff on both parts. And then, um, um, oh, sorry, Jeff, no, 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 2023 budget, just uh, quickly update on where we are on that. So, we reviewed the current year expenditures and revenues, um, and as well as the projected into next year. Now, next year, we don't have projected for grants that we will receive some this year. Um, but we are uh, working with Michelle to finalize. You know, we, we look at the numbers. Uh, we should have our plan is to actually speed up the process a little bit or move it forward a little bit this year, uh, and be able to have a draft budget for review in October, so we can vote on it sooner rather than waiting until December. Like we should do for a final vote on the budget. Yeah. So, um, at this month's finance committee meeting, we should be having a. Um, our hope is to have a budget ready for review in October. Then, questions, comments, people. Oh, just one quick thing to add. We we were discussing with infrastructure as well some of the programs that they were looking at. So we'll have that all um, mm -hmm. ready to go for next month. So and the comment is great job. I voted on budget so many times late in December. I'm just yeah. there, there are a lot of uh, external factors going into wanting to speed up the process this year to move forward a little bit. So okay. uh, the, the thanks goes to Michelle especially for mm -hmm. working to get that done ahead of schedule here. 
Good. Yeah, I certainly appreciate it. Um, you know, I've spoken to you guys about so my, my big concern in terms of where infrastructure sits with this. And so that that's going to be, to me, the, the ticket item that we need to make sure that we have our head wrapped around properly. Mm -hmm. And as long as we're there, we're, we're good to go. Uh, yeah, to, to both committees, we'll move on to infrastructure. There now, public safety and, and management and government, there, there really isn't much because I haven't been able to either participate mm -hmm. in, in one or, or in the other uh, over the last Time. So I've I've submitted a an article for the yeah. newsletter, and that pretty much tells you where we are. We're in process still with with the immersion. Well, we'll be picking it back up, and uh, yeah, that's nothing that uh, some magical little hearing aids and some other stuff can't fix. Right. So we'll, we'll be there. There to go. Um, moving on to to infrastructure. Yeah, a couple of things to mention and discuss. Um, so one was, you know, we had a, uh, a workshop, you know, Alex set that up with our engineer, the conservancy, conservatory district, and a couple other folks, you know, just to kind of go over our infrastructure, where, where we're at, where we've been, all that kind of good stuff. Um, you know, it was really well done. And I, I think it was typically before COVID was something, you know, we'd try to do like every year. Um, so we're trying to pick that back up. If you didn't get a chance to see that, it was recorded. Alex sent the link out. So so it's worth the investment of your time just to kind of see where we're at and get caught up on all the ongoings. Um, so, you know, that was good. And we're going to be finishing up that, I think, two two weeks from now or something, right, Alex? So we're looking to take some time next Friday, like this Friday, the next Friday, and kind of get through about 25 slides. And then this one's going to get through. And we're going to cover the important aspects of MS4. We're going to finish that. And then the sanitary, specifically with the Alcasan Consent Decree. So what it means to us and where we've been and what's in front of us as far as staying within the consent decree. And David and Gavin, of course, work with us on the other side of it, the legal side of it. I know for Michelle and I, it was important for us to just sit down and try to get caught up to where council's been over the years. I think 2018 may have been the last time that Gateway did a presentation like this. Yeah, yeah just I think you did. Yeah. Back in and, and what we we're hoping to do is whoever and whenever council could plug in, they could have those slides available and we won't have the reporting available for them to watch and you know make sense of what's all these moving parts that we have in various committees. So you're not going to try to have the whole council here that Friday, just the infrastructure committee? Oh, it, it would be the same kind of thing. Because it's okay. an educational event, Anybody. okay. It's literally not any sort of decision making or okay. debating. It would be like if you guys all attended Seven Springs, mm -hmm. went to a session together at AM, you're getting information about right. for us, our local sewer system and how yeah. we're making it work. That's for me. A couple other things on that. Um, so we got the final bid plans and uh, bid specifications for the you know bathroom upgrades and female locker room. Uh, committee's going to be meeting on Friday to review all those. I know we did a, a once over already with Ralph and Alex. Oh, and there's a printed set there. So if anyone wants to flip through afterwards, um, you know, they were in pretty good shape. A couple of questions came up from that. So the committee is going to kind of do the final once over. Uh, and at that point, we'll be ready to make a recommendation to council. I don't see any reason we wouldn't be recommending to move forward with bidding. Uh, you know, the hopeful timeline would be to bid it in October and then, um, you know, award the project sometime in December so we can have work start, you know, right after the first of the year. Um, questions? Nope. Oh, just excellent. Then the other one was our occupancy inspection ordinance. So I know we mentioned this once or twice. Um, that had been kind of uh, on hold pending some additional comment and updates from some recent litigation in what, 2019, I think, right? right. Yeah. Yeah. So I know that, um, you know, D David and Gavin worked together to, to get that finalized and over to us with some of those updates. And the committee is going to be re reviewing that so we can get that advertised as well. So, just a question about the occupancy inspection ordinance. Um, understanding that, you know, when you sell a home or that will rent a property, you typically have an occupancy inspection done. Is this more or less to moralize that process or are we altering? Because I tried to go to the e-code to see if there was something already in place to see what the differences are between the ordinance inspection um, or occupancy inspection ordinance that you're proposing and I didn't find it. Well, Brooke, you get a star for that. That was kind of our issue. So when Chris and I started to work with this, 
you know, we inherited a system and I don't know how long it was, but it was some time before we figured out it wasn't codified like we were doing it. So that's exactly why we're doing this is so that we can um, get the code up with practice. And we're not doing anything um, unusual or abnormal compared to other communities. We just took it for granted that we had it in the code like the DIU came to us and was doing it for us that it was the way it was written in our code. Well, we found out it wasn't. Um, so what we want to do is by codifying it, put it uniformly in there and, and make it better, if you will. That's right. But you can post off for that because that was our issue, right? We're like, okay, so why do we do it this way? And where is it out in the code? We couldn't find it ourselves. And with Gavin's help and others, we're like, oh, we need to kind of work. So will the fees at all change? Or is that something that, is that something we can discuss? So that's a great question. We, I want to have as a best practice every budget year to look at the, the fees and total. And when you adopt the budget, adopt a fee schedule every year, whether you're changing a fee or not. We haven't really got into that detail with this because we were really working with the brass tax. We've mm -hmm. never really raised the necessity. So I wasn't anticipating it, but I would anticipate always looking at our fees about this time of year, like the finance committee and other committees and, and with our vendors to say, are we covering the cost to do this? Because that's what we're allowed to do. Right. We're not to make profit with fees. We're just to cover the cost of doing the business. So we have a, in our committee, the infrastructure committee talked about the fee schedule. Uh, finance committee and others will be bringing them. So I don't, I, as far as I'm concerned, we we never heard from Dave or from Ralph or Michelle, hey, we really need to raise this fee because we're not covering Correct. the cost for inspection. Um, so they'll stay the same as far as I can tell, but they could change theoretically when you adopt a new fee schedule in December. Is, is there a particular concern on that? Because I think Yeah, no, I just wanted to, because if we're talking about adopting a ordinance, I just wasn't sure if we were also at the same table considering you know, raising, modifying the fee. Yeah. And good. so uh, that's where that question is. Not that I'm saying that we should or shouldn't. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like Alex pointed out, I mean, this is something that, you know, we've been doing, we've been doing it through best practices and, you know, we have legal authority from the, from the way the state code is written to be doing it. However, best practice is, you know, to, uh, put together, you know, an actual and, and codify it formally, you know, with a couple of the other small details, uh, you know, some of the best practice sheets, all that other stuff, just so we can do it better, you know. You know, I know infrastructure's had some heavy lifting, so we, we appreciate you. <laughs> Next month, but, we'll go over the other four. That's what we're working on. It's, 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 been, it's been a minute. It's been a minute for you. Uh, any other questions or, or comments for infrastructure? Uh, communication. Hey, hey, Deb. Yeah, Valerie. Any, Valerie. Anything? Anything to update on communication? No, I mean we uh, we've had some good articles for the newsletter that'll be coming out. Um, Valerie probably has more, but she's not here right now. Um, and I think our, right now our, our our big thing is the uh, celebrate Churchill Day, which is in three weeks. And uh, that's going well. The yard signs are have been going up all around the. The borough. I don't know if you've seen any of them, but uh, we're still we still have more to put out, and uh, we've been promoting it more on Savvy Citizen and the website. And kind of that's where we are. We just have to cross our fingers and hope it's a nice day. And I think a lot of people will come out. I think it'll be a lot of fun. So Matt brought up a really great idea. Uh, what is it, Matt? I know Matt of, of all the people. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> But you mentioned, you know, we should probably have a table for council, right? Like a booth where people can come. A dunking booth? I mean, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, I told them, I'll take the shots, right? Like, you know, 25, you know, you can donate towards infrastructure and throw tomatoes at, at me whatever you need to do, right? Um, I've been asked to sit at the, at the welcome table for a certain period of time, but that doesn't mean that that's the council table. Yeah, and I, I think that people, you know, identifying it as what yeah, it is, you know, gives people the chance to come up and say, like, you know, I, I hate you or I love you or I have concerns or have you seen my road or my water, you know, whatever it is, right? Um, and people who normally wouldn't come to meetings or have time to, to have that kind of conversation. Um, so 
I, you know, if we can do that, I don't know what that, what that entails. I'm happy to mat it, you know, for as much as I can. And see, you know, I'll take the bulk of, of matting. And I know that mm -hmm. uh, some folks have already signed up to, to handle traffic. You know, by the way, he said, we should have a, like a booth for council. I said, that's a great idea. They <laughs> said, but I can't do it. I can't do it. Traffic. Right. Well played, sir. Well played. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would be, I'd be all, all for it and happy to. Me too. To, to man it for, for as long and, as we can. And there's an exhibit behind you that would be interesting to have there. That's the roads that have been paved in the past and what year they were paved. Yeah, so I was looking at all, yeah. all these. So that would be an interesting board because I think it relates to everybody. Mm -hmm. And most people would be very interested to find out you know, what like road was paved and what, condi paved. what condition it's currently in. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's the, there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you'll have some you'll have some shocked people though when they find out that their road is actually in good condition. Yeah. <laughs> like, they're like, what? <laughs> yeah. But no, but I I, I appreciated the, the idea and uh, I think it's something that if we can do, just tell tell me how we do it. And, uh, well, well, Michelle and I can help you. Yeah. Perfect. All that works. And I'm also hoping that the council will be volunteering as well, even if it's an hour here or there, because we do need a lot, you know, a lot of volunteers to put this off. So it's kind of a twofold job. If you could volunteer a little bit and then maybe, you know, I had reached out to say we have this welcome table. It'd be really nice to have the council here, but Matt's idea is even better if we want to have a small table and, and you know, not everybody be there at the same time because I'm hoping some will be out volunteering while they're at the table. Or Jay, we could have a dunking machine and see how that goes. We could probably- I'll, I'll, you know, dunk <laughs> You know, if, if you, I, I'll do whatever. So <laughs> I'll do both at that point. You can dunk me. I'll, I'll help guide some traffic, and then you can yell at me. Right. Sounds like a brilliant day for me. I love it. Yeah. As long as you're a good knife there. That's all I have. Right. No, so, but excellent. let's plan on having a, you know a table for the council, and hopefully the count everybody will be there to you know if they can if they're not out of town or something else they have pressing, but they can also help volunteering as well. And I'd like to tell anybody out there who's listening, you know, we still could use some volunteers. So uh, please contact me and I can forward your email to uh, Janet Paul, who is the person, Janet lives on Thornberry, uh, who is the person coordinating all the volunteers. So, yeah. Good idea, Matt. Deb, what about the um, yard signs that are being posted about the Churchill Celebrates Day? Is there a way, way that other homeowners would be able to get some of those yard signs to post on their block? Well, because of, you know, our somewhat limited budget, as you can imagine, we are, we'd like to do that, but we feel we have to strategically place them on place is where stop signs and lights where you have 20, 30 seconds to actually read them. I mean, we actually had a few already placed in yards, even like, on, for example, on Greensburg Pike, which is, uh, which is nice, but if you're driving along, it's hard, it's hard to read everything. And hindsight, I think we would have done the signs a little bit differently. There's, there's a little more information that probably is unnecessary on those signs. So if there are leftover one where we, if we feel we put them strategically everywhere we need to put them, then I will let you know if you know of a few neighbors. Cause yeah, it is nice to have them in a the yard um, because it, it's telling your neighbors, hey, I'm going to this, you, you know, and it's good for people who are walking their dogs or what have you, but we're trying to be able to reach out to as much traffic as possible. Um, Paul's done a great job in the corner of Churchill and, and Beulah Road to put the signs along the garden area and we need to put a few more by the borough and, and what have you. But uh, I'll, I'll get back to you on that if I have extra signs. We're, we're at our limit with our budget for the signs. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, I would, yeah please let us know because I, I, I follow what Brooke's saying. One of, the, one of the things to me about community day versus, versus I think when we do other kind of signage where we strategically place things is there's a lot of emphasis sometimes on people driving through. But I think for community day, mm -hmm. there, there's a benefit in actually having them as a thought of strategic, strategically in communities. So, mm -hmm. you know, I have a very active long block, right? Um, 
you know, Blackridge has a very active I have group three of stop folks, signs right? right at the intersection. So you've got three different so, drivers. You know, trying to the... trying to think about that a little bit in terms yeah. of of how we place it strategically, just just to put that out there. And that, you know, okay. Not, not telling you how to do it, just 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 the just the thought of it. Anytime there's a um, so, but I know you guys are are doing a great job. So yeah. I, you know, it's just an extra thought. That's all. No, um, I no, that is important. Um, maybe next year we'll have a big budget. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. There we go. Uh, I keep telling you. Now, don't, don't get me started because I have told the, the, rec, the rec board on more than one occasion, right, especially after their super successful original community day, right, to mm -hmm. come to council right after like a real successful moment and say, hey, you know, it'd be great if when you do your budget next year, mm -hmm. we increase this budget so we can do more because you really love it. And then council will say, we did really love that. Mm -hmm. That's a great way to, to increase a, a budget. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yes, no, I, I, I agree with you about the budget. In fact, I just ordered 20 more signs because I still feel we don't have enough. And you're right, Jay. It is nice to have, and, and, and Brooke as well. It is nice to have it on, you know, in your neighborhood so the neighbors know and people, you know, it's all part of the community. But, you know, first and foremost, we have to target where are the most people going to see it. Um, but I did order 20 more. So, yeah, I mean, in our budgets, it, it's fine. You know, we're not going to go over budget, and you know, it's it's a minimal budget for our borough, but it's it's good enough to to pull this off. And remember, it's not a community day. It's not going to be like the one no. before. So it's small, just because of COVID, and we didn't have the time to really plan so much. We're hoping next summer. We're going to have the big the big blowout again, like we did with vendors and auction items and whatever. But we do have some really good food trucks, some good live local musicians, and some kid games. And I, I think it, it, it's going to be just a nice event. Sounds great. And, we will and next year we'll budget for a big banner. <laughs> banner. Yeah. So I'm telling you that. Banners. Yeah, I'm telling you now. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, anything else on, uh, any questions for, for the communications committee? All right, let's move on to uh, climate action. So we did not meet uh, since the last meeting. That's because we have our next meeting scheduled as soon as those bids come in for the uh, waste management contract. So I'm still in the process of scheduling that and uh, Deb and Matt, I'll uh, bring up that email so we can be sure, we'll be sure, try to get everyone at that meeting, uh, either Friday or Monday, so that we can, as Alex said, whether or not we can actually accept the bid immediately or we have to look into it a little bit more. Related to that is the ordinance which will be updated to be consistent with the contract. So we will handle it. Okay. So yeah, so we should have more on that very soon. Adam, did you say a climate action meeting on Monday? Yeah, I'll, I'll email you and Matt and we'll, we'll try to get that scheduled. Okay. Try to get it so all of our schedules are okay. Okay. Time. Yeah, we're doing our infrastructure on Friday, so I'm yeah. thinking probably better. Yeah. Thank you, Adam. Any, any questions on that? I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Any uh yeah, I had I had to unmute myself. I'm sorry. Uh yeah, I, I, I did have two comments here. Uh, just recently, I had some talks with uh, Patty DeMarco over in Forest Hills uh, about uh, our, our deer population. And I know I'd sent some, some information along to Alex as in wondering if, if we couldn't possibly get together with those other boroughs and townships, since, you know, there aren't really Churchill deer, there are community deer, that if we were going to have a program to do some culling, that we do a joint venture with those other boroughs to look into you know having some type of calling program so i know i'm you know patty's patty's very interested in it i'm sure we can get sylvia on board and pull in Penn hills as well forest hills too uh, so that's something we could think about for the future i know we discussed it in the past and uh, you know we got occupied with some other things and kind of got pushed back so i think we can bring it bring it back forward again and see how we can look after it again I'll, I'll just say that's on my immediate list. Mm -hmm. um, that's something that just got delayed just because I got delayed a little bit. Yeah. Um, but that's on my 
immediate list to address in, in some type of reconstitution of uh, whether it's a individual liaison to your committee, something along that line to bring it back and work it with the other uh, the other communities. Mm -hmm. So I mm -hmm. think that that's an that's an absolute, Mr. Mayor, absolute. Yeah. Now, if you yeah. recall, we had a community member bring this up, and I had brought it to when I had said to them that that we would take said yeah. action. So um, it is something that it didn't slip my mind. It's just like some other things got in the way. Uh, so that will be happening shortly. Yeah. The other thing was, I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. No, the other thing was, you know, we just had recently had two accidents down on Beulah Road at the corner of uh, Homer and Beulah. And, and, and we all know that speeding, you know, in, not just in Churchill, everywhere has just gotten kind of out of hand. And I know the chief has put in for the electronic signs. Uh, we've, we've, you know, had some conversations with the state, what could be done along Beulah Road. I saw one resident sent me a letter that she sent to PennDOT and PennDOT explained that, yeah, while things could be done, the municipality is responsible for the signage and the maintenance of, of any uh, devices that would be put on the road. So, I, you know, I know we just, you know, it's a long haul to get to that point where we want to be to make our roads safe. But Beulah and Greensburg Pike, you know, especially with the school up there and all the traffic that travels Beulah, we all know it's it's a it's not a safe place to travel because we have so many feeders onto those roads. And if you're doing 60 miles an hour down there, you don't have a chance pulling out on the road. So I'd really like to get those electronic signs. I know Jay Costa was supposed to give us a little help in, you know, getting those signs, but maybe if we can somehow, you know, push that ahead a little, a little bit more to kind of prod that to, you know, prod, get that into place. Um, and that was it. No, the other comment was, I know I originally asked someone about the uh, school zone signs up on Greensburg Pike, and there was some discussion about um, whether or not we were actually allowed to have a, a school zone up there because of the setback of the school and who, whose responsibility it was. And I just read today the report from Gateway, I think it was Ryan that said that they would be able to, you know, do some uh, research into, you know, how that could be done, whether it's a a school zone flashing area, you know, so we can look into that to make that a safe area up there. Because again, Greensburg Pike is one of our race tracks. So, as I recall, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's probably five years ago or so that we had this discussion about the school zone with the chief. It might have been a little bit less than that, even, mm -hmm. uh, and that we weren't in a space that we could do that, even though we had some sign up at the time. There right, was a question right. on whether or not that sign was was actually legal to have. Mm -hmm. uh, do you recall that, Mr. Mayor? Yes, that, and that's exactly the, the same conversation that, that Ron and I had the other day, as to whether or not that can actually, is, is a legal thing to do. Okay, so do, because I don't recall, and that's why, why I'm bringing it back up, since it was something that was already discussed, had it already been researched or was it just discussed without research? Because I, I think I'm it was, a little confused knowing that, that I recall the conversation, yeah, I think it was just discussed, and then that's about as far as it went. Okay. I know I talked to Dr. Castagna about it. He was going to talk to his his uh, staff as to what they could do. Uh, I, I think it's gone past Gavin. I'm not sure David's there. He can maybe chime in as to I'll where. The Monday meeting. I'll give you an update because there's a lot of research yeah. that's happened since our last conversation on the subject, including correspondence from PennDOT. Okay, that, that, that would help a lot more. Our email exchanges. And I, you know, the other day, when I was on Greensburg Pike, I looked, actually, the signs aren't even there anymore. There used to be those school zone signs, 15 miles, they're, they're gone. So, you know, who took them down? I, I you know, I don't, I don't really know. Well, it was PennDOT, um, the school district. I, I'm, I'm not sure we took them down. I mean, that's fine, and, and we can, you know, we'll update you on Monday because that's Kyle, perfect. Yeah, because I'm, you know, you watch on the news, you're seeing these people, they're passing yeah. school buses, okay. you know, they're passing school buses with red flashing lights. And I, well, one woman lost three kids. People are insane, so what we can do to, to address yeah. that, uh, yeah. I certainly support, but just understanding kind of where we are, so we can talk yeah. about it, and that, that'll, that'll work fine, um, and that, that will, uh, that will address that one. Yeah, that's good. That's that's uh, anything I wanted to touch on tonight. Excellent. So, sorry, I was a question on that. Did did we have any updates on that grant for those electronic signs? I know we put that in quite a while ago. No update. Okay, thank you. 
And I'll give uh, if you remind me, I'll give Jay a call. See at least on that end. See if we can push it from from that direction. Yeah, because I noticed uh, there's been quite a few that have gone up in the last month. There's okay. well, yeah around neighboring communities like those radar speed tracking signs. Mm -hmm. I'll call up to see what, where it's at. See if we can help travel a little bit. He was trying to. The chief was trying to get the ones that when you go over a certain speed limit, it, you'll see a red and a, a blue light that would flash, kind of warn you. You know, you're going too fast. That's the last I recall is that we had put in for something, but I have not been updated. Yeah. That. And they're 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 quite they are quite expensive. So, I mean, we can actually afford. How much were we asking Jay to give us? The grant project was about seventy two thousand okay. dollars. And anything else, uh, question for the mayor or from the mayor? No, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you as always. Uh, any other questions, concerns, comments from folks in the room, not in the room, not wanting to be in the room? I guess I have a question. In, in, um, in alignment with what the mayor was saying about the deer population, I understand that there's a fencing ordinance that requires a certain footage for the front of your property and the rear of your property. Um, is that something that is set at the state level or is that something that is set by the municipalities? Because that can also yeah. help to mitigate the deer. Yes. Um, yeah. the defense yeah, that yeah. typically yeah. be your learning yeah. ordinance. Yeah, yeah. Your, your local yeah. ordinance. Yeah. We have, yes. We've had quite a few dances on fencing here. Uh, okay. have. <laughs> there, there have been uh, some some interesting moments of, of what what constitutes the side of the house versus the front of the house. Right. That's what I'm saying. Uh, you know, if you're interestingly situated, you know, that's, you could argue it was the side <laughs> there, right. you know. Uh, but yeah, so it's it's set by the municipality. Yeah, right. Yeah, you're right. You're 100 right. I mean, I just you know, I know the calling is a solution, but also fencing because I have small children and there's other homeowners that have small children and we know that Pennsylvania leads the nation with Lyme disease to bring yeah, the sure. with the deer population so um, that definitely is well to follow that I was going to mention the mayor was talking that this morning in the post is that there was an article about how the deer are destroying the the uh all the material in the in the uh, parks in the city and there are a bunch of people who are very, very concerned that that's going to change the whole ecosystem of the, of the parks. So, I used to have a whole herd that came through my backyard. Yes, you do. What and I'm talking to a herd. What happened? You to got them? a giant dog, Huey. That's what happened. Huey, Huey yeah. what happened yeah. to them? That's what I should do. They, they. I mean, you know, I have no offense no to the back. And to you, I'm always concerned that it's a small child, right? Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. kind of a little less concerned, but still, it's pretty steep. Um, but that's when I first got the the rings, right? My ring cameras, because I just every winter I'd see these tracks. So I'm like, where are they coming from? I'd fall asleep. And then I put in the camera. So I'm like, oh my, it's an entire herd. Stampede. Like they yes. just come running up my whole house. They run around. They're like, mm, what do we have to eat? And then they okay. left. Then I got a 140-pound dog mm -hmm. who just kind of hangs out there for a little bit. And they're like, that's what I need to do. Over, yeah. you know. <laughs> so but they all know you. He goes all pastas are eaten down to the ground. Oh, yeah. no, that's a, that's yeah. a given now. Yeah, it's yeah. A, you know, the, the article, Diane, that, that I, I had sent to you, mentioned it said, it part of it said that Shenley Park has 65 times more deer than it had in 2010. That's right. And that they're eating, they're eating uh -huh. the, the local plants down to like where, where that native uh, uh, fauna, uh, flora rather is not, doesn't exist anymore because they've just right. eaten it away. Destroying the whole ecosystem. You know, and, and it's start hurting venison. Right. You know, <laughs> it's sustainable. <laughs> there, really there has to be public policy that goes beyond our little borough. You know, that's that's the problem. Yeah. Well, I think there's a there's a space for us to talk about it regionally. I and I think that's a that's an important step for us. Yeah. So we'll we'll move mm -hmm. to that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, very good, very good. Hey, I'm sorry. I sneezed before, and I thought I had muted my uh, microphone. I'm I'm sorry if I <laughs> didn't even didn't even hear you. <laughs> Thanks. Well, bless you on the sneeze anyway. For that's right. Uh, anything else that, that we've got from anybody? 
I had a quick question. What um, happened with our police vehicle that was in the accident? That's a great question. Total. Getting shot of answering it. It was total. Total. Okay. Um, thanks to Michelle and, and Chief Ackerley, we're trying right. to make health insurance actually give us a proper. Okay. So what they did in the first one was basically give us a total for the vehicle. And Chief Ackerley was like, at the light bar, the, the, inter, the equipment on the, on the inside, what about all that? And so we're working to get pricing. It's interesting how you've got to provide the insurance company with pricing instead of them telling you what they think that stuff's about. That's right. Which, you know, we'll do. Um, but all right, the most can. expensive ones you can. <laughs> so so meanwhile, you know, we're obviously, you, the process is signing over the title to them and then there's, and they give you a check when you're in that process. But um, Chief Ackerley, has been staying on top of that and trying to make sure we get the maximum amount of feedback exchange. Um, it isn't a full value. Right. So even if we get more, let's say we get 25,000, you guys all know we're talking about $60,000 uh, right. outfit and purchase of new yep. vehicles. So it's unfortunate. So what we're doing with the finance committee and kind of looking at the chief and how we can manage getting one kind of budgeted. So well, we, even if we got the check next week and we put an order in, we just know for but, the one we've ordered this year, we haven't got it fast, so there's going to be a lag. But right now, I'm really happy with how well the, you know, the chief actor has been on top of that and trying to maximize our return. So I guess that's where my question was leading. Is how are we coming? I know we tried to order one, what, I think beginning of this year is when we originally said, like, yeah, car, we budgeted yeah. it and let's get it. And yeah. We yeah, still haven't originally, we went for a hybrid and it's just not available, so we've got lower expectations and are trying to get one. And I believe Ron has... Uh, test driven, another model, another one is looking at getting that upfitted. So it's going to be available to us soon. Okay. You know, because it is what it is. We, I think, are down to three vehicles. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. We yeah. normally would like to have five and we're, we're kind of stretching it right now. Right. But hopefully before the end of the year, we should have that other one in. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Learning from experience, I'm wondering if we should take a look at our insurance policies for the future. Yeah, it, it was a limiting thing for me cost. because I've, I've wondered about what the change of price would be for that replacement, replacement cost yeah. versus, um, you know, the, getting it, yeah. looking at the value of that car. It was a 2017, and then I had a bit of miles because we're driven, right. bit, you know, because we're driven by three shifts. Um, whatever it's worth, I've, I've been kind of frustrated. But I, you don't total cars much. You know, it doesn't happen often. Yeah, no, I've had fender banners through the years. It's never right. totaled a fixed car. So it just kind of amused me to figure out how little we're getting in return, yeah. considering what it costs to get a police car exactly. back in line. Mm -hmm. my, my smile is uh, my thought of, what are we, a couple square miles, right? Mm -hmm. They can bike it, right? <laughs> E-bike. Vespas. E-bike is what you meant to say. Really nice. E-bikes e are really nice. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I'll with you on that. Dennis, to the condition of our roads might not be conducive mm -hmm. to. Oh, I just, I, I chuckle because Alex said, "Oh, I've never had to deal with a total car." I'm thinking, like, my parents are small business owners. I can't tell you the number of total cars we dealt with. Like, <laughs> employees don't care. And your police cars are probably at least one accident a year. If it's not yeah. a deer, it's somebody else sitting down or them right. or something. Down. Yeah, it's rare. And you, if you've seen the video, I'd encourage you if you're interested. Yeah, it's oh, yeah, brutal. Yeah. Watch it happen. It rolls. Yes. Yeah. It's shocking to think that people that walk out of the vehicles after that. It's great for you to yep. yeah. yeah. And our officer is fine. He's fine. Oh, yeah. 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 In fact, he's a new father. Yes. Oh, he's a new right, father. Right. right. Good. We have, two, we have two new babies for our police officers Chris uh, mm -hmm. Lewandowski and Chris mm -hmm. Shell both had their, their babies. Hey. And Valerie, our council person, right. yeah. last just, week. This is a, this is a, um, this is a baby scene. <laughs> and there's another little side note. We do have two cars that operate throughout the day. We always have two cars running. So right. we're, and when we're done, we're done. So right. we just hope nothing happens. Say, no, 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 I thought it would be like, you know, community policing, biking through the neighborhood. I like it. 
You got to see folks. Mm -hmm. I have some pretty strong legs for those hills. I mean, you know. Get one of those well, e-bikes. Um, we'll see what happens, right? But I'm asking to go to go down Marriott. Okay? Just say, I'm going to keep it out there as a, uh, a, a leverage piece when we get in the contract negotiation. Well, the American, the American <laughs> deputize you, and you can uh, be the first person. So let us know how that goes. <laughs> you see me, right? <laughs> There's a lot of things that are happening in this world. Uh, all right. Any, anything else that we've got on the table? All right. We good to adjourn then? Yep. Thank you, Michelle. I just read your email. Oh, sorry. Game set match, people. Wait, Thank okay. you. Hey, good night, everyone. Paving. What's that? Paving. It started. Can paving I? Paving started. Yeah. Everyone's leaving, but paving started. <laughs> all right. totally, I gave you all, all the line. You got you to gotta holler next time. <laughs> I sat here. I looked. I asked. Champion. Yeah. Give us an update.